Welcome to the Conference USA Showcase. I'm Stacey Erfley alongside Ron Thulin. Thank you so much for joining us for our first showcase of the 2013-14 season. Well, it's an exciting time for Conference USA, expanding to 16 members, 14 of which will compete in football. And it all starts this weekend, finally. <laughs> Finally, we finally get the season kicked off, but the preseason poll by the coach is very, very interesting. When you look overall at Conference USA, there's some wide open races, but there are also some tight races. Let's take a look at the East first. East Carolina coaches say are going to win it. Then you have Marshall, then you have Middle Tennessee. Obviously, East Carolina and Marshall will end the season playing each other, but they've got to get to that point first, and that's huge. I would, I would agree with what the coaches say on that. Now in the West, Tulsa, Rice, Louisiana Tech, UTEP, those are the top four. I think Tulsa is the cream of the crop. The question for Tulsa, which we'll go in a little bit further, can Brent Guy get all these new players to play defense? Interesting coaches poll, and I think the West, though, that's the more wide open of the two conferences. All right, Ron, so let's break it down. We talked about East Carolina. You said that they have to get there. Ruffin McNeil, it seems like he's welcoming back just an arsenal of players. He's got his quarterback mm -hmm. back and one of his leading scorers. So talk about what they need to do to stay at the top of that poll. Now, you think I have a man crush on Shane Carter. <laughs> I know, I know every, you everybody does, crush. but I really like this young man. He had, comes from a great upbringing. We saw him last year. At this time in 2012, he was not the starting quarterback. They said, okay, we had great competition, but you are gonna start on the bench. I sat with him at a hotel at East Carolina. He was depressed, but he said, I will come back. What did the kid do? He came back, did a great job, started to mature. And one of the reasons why, he's got uh, Ventavious Cooper, the running back. This guy is really a, a, a beast. And I think with the new defensive coordinator at East Carolina and Rick Smith, I think it's gonna be a good year for Ruffin McNeil and company, but it all starts with Cardin and company. Well, and you made the prediction that East Carolina and Marshall will have to play each other, mm -hmm. obviously, to remain at the top. Now let's talk about Marshall. We know that they had one of the most explosive offenses in the country, anchored by Rakeem Cato. They come back. Does their defense have enough this year? Well, let's talk about Cato first, because what he did last season was absolutely remarkable. Sitting and talking to Doc Holliday, their coach, just about a month ago, he said this kid is still hasn't scratched the surface. He could do so much more. He was MVP of Conference USA last season, preseason player of the year this year. They may have to score a lot of points. However, you look at Doc Holliday's teams in the past, they play great defense, mm -hmm. but that, I think, is the big question mark for them. And then we kind of stay with this quarterback conversation. The first three teams that we've talked about, now we move to new member Middle Tennessee, and they have a veteran quarterback in Logan Kilgore. Now he passed the 5,000 career passing yards. Talk about what he needs to do, but also what the rest of Rick Stockstill's team needs to do. Well, last year they increased their win total by six. That is absolutely remarkable, and I think it has to go to the quarterback position. But can he repeat that performance? Because, Stacey, as you know, you've been around the league a while now, you start having those kind of numbers and you start having that kind of success. People start targeting you and they start game planning you. And I think the key for them is obviously him stepping it up yet another notch this season. Now let's talk about the Blazers. Garrick McGee, he's in his second year. Last year when we started this show, it was kind of like all the new coaches coming into the league. Now we have them in their second year. He comes back. More players, what does he have to do to kind of turn the corner? Well, I think you look at what UAB did last year. Their offense, they didn't have a problem with their offense. The best in school history. The problem, as a lot of teams have, is going to be on the other side of the football. But I think Derek, in, 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 you mentioned his second season and talking with him about a month ago, he learned a lot. Not only time management, but also how to keep these kids motivated. And I think it comes down, once again, it's kind of like a broken record, but defense, defense, defense for UAB. They've got the offense. They can put points on the board, but can they stop you? Well, now let's move down to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and Southern Miss. They had that disappointing season last year, a winless season after a Conference USA championship in 2011. But they rearrange, they bring in offensive coordinator from Oklahoma State in Todd Munkin. He takes over. Do we see a shift? I mean, how does this play out for Coach Munkin this season? Well, they have four starters return on offense, nine on defense. You look at the offense of Todd Munkin when he was at Oklahoma State, it's boom, 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 boom. I mean, they're going to speed this up. However, to me, Southern Miss, they've got to win their first ball game of the year because if not, all of a sudden people go, oh my goodness, you know, you're riding this 13-game losing streak right now. That can't be. So I think with Todd Monken, though, the key's going to be offense. I've watched Todd for a number of years as offensive coordinator for a, a couple of different teams. This guy is extremely talented. He's going to bring it to Southern Miss. And I think they've got to win race last year. Not only, you know, with the fans, but I think the players got to mentally say, forget it. We can't do anything about it. 
And talking to Tom Monken about this, he said one of the first things I said to the players is that was last year. We can't worry about it. Now, do the kids take that to heart? That remains to be seen. But I think it's a breath of fresh air because if you meet Todd, he's got a vivacious personality. He's ready. Yeah, he's, he's, ready. he's pumped up. Well, now we welcome Conference USA welcomed two schools in Florida this year. Let's start with Florida Atlantic. Carl Pellini heading that brigade for his second season. Just a quick comment on Carl Pellini. Love the guy. Got to know him when he was working for his brother, Bo Pellini, at Nebraska. They're good Youngstown guys. How could you not like a guy from Youngstown? You got Bob Stoops, Mike Stoops, Bo Pellini, Carl Pellini. These guys play bocce ball. They drink Iron City Light. You got to love this guy. He has got incredible enthusiasm. He's got a great defensive technique. He learned a lot last year as a first-year head coach, but it's a step. I mean, he could have stayed in Nebraska the rest of his career. He wanted to make that step outside the box and outside of Bo's shadow. He's going to make a mark in Conference USA. He, he is a defensive coach, and obviously he's going to uh, have a great impact on that team. I love Carl Pellini. He's going to be a surprise in Conference USA in years to come. And then finally in Florida, we have FIU, the first year under Ron Turner. What do you make of this? He's kind of got his hands full. Ron Turner, you look at his pedigree. I mean, my goodness, he's been a head coach at a major school. And, and he knows it's going to be a while before he really gets this thing going. But this is where you have to go on your experience. And you don't try to change the system. I mean, you can't. I mean, this is what you've coached for so many years. you got to stay with that system. But does he have the players to compete in that system? That's the key. Well, Ron, that was that was a lot. That was. I'm out of breath. I was going to say we may we need to take a quick break so that Ron no, can we need catch his breath. Conference USA banned to come out at <laughs> halftime here. That was that was just a small look at our East Division. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll take a look at the West.